Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kari and today I'm going to be giving you some tips on how you can read more in 2023. So maybe one of your New Year's resolutions is to read more next year. So whether you don't really read too much right now or you already read a lot, I think everyone will be able to find a tip that will help them read even more. So personally, I didn't always used to be such a big reader as I am today. But for the past couple of years, I've read about 50 to 55 books per year. And the tips that I'm going to share with you today are the things that I do to help me read so much. So all that to say, all of these tips are tested and approved by me. So if your goal is to read more in 2023, stick around. The first tip that I have is kind of a basic one, but it's to set a reading goal on Goodreads or if you prefer Storygraph, on Storygraph. It's really fun every year on January 1st to set your reading goal for that year. And then as you read more and more books, you can see your goal rising. And it's really fun because Goodreads has calculated your goal and how fast you're going to reach your goal. And so it will tell you things like, oh, you're two books ahead of schedule or you're one book behind schedule. And that can kind of give you a boost to fit that next book in so that you get back on track. I know that there's some people who don't like the pressure of setting a Goodreads goal. You know, maybe they put that their goal is one book, which I totally understand, but personally, I love having that goal and seeing my numbers go up and up and up throughout the year. There's just something really satisfying about that. So I love setting my Goodreads goal every year. It's just nice to get that little encouragement every time you can click finished book and see your number tick up one more book. Next is one that I know is really hard. It's hard for me too, but I would say to limit your screen time on your phone. I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. Everybody's guilty of it. Spending too much time on our phones. I would suggest that you look at your screen time on your phone and see how much time you would consider that you're wasting on your phone. And consider what if I just put 50% of that time into reading a book every day? You know, that could be a considerable amount of time. And think about how quickly you could get through a book if you added up those minutes every single day of the week. How many books could you read with that time? Also, my next tip is kind of connected to this. For a long time, when I would lay down to go to sleep at night, I would just scroll on my phone and waste a lot of time just scrolling because that would help me fall asleep. But for the past year or so, I've been keeping my Kindle in my bed. And so instead of laying down and scrolling through my phone at night, I'll put away my phone and pick up my Kindle and read from my Kindle until I fall asleep instead of scrolling. So this is a really practical way of diminishing your screen time and favoring reading instead. It's really nice for me because I love to read up until I go to sleep, but obviously to read from a physical book, you need the light. But right before I'm going to sleep, I mean, I need it to be dark in order to fall asleep. So the Kindle really facilitates being able to still read while I'm kind of in the process of falling asleep. So it's very, very practical for me and I've gotten a lot of reading done that way. Another way that I would recommend for you to be able to read more books is to buddy read. So maybe you have a friend who also likes to read. That would be a really easy option to be able to read a book at the same time as a friend and then text or call each other to discuss the book. Or maybe there's a book club in your community that you could join. And again, that's kind of the same idea, being able to go to the meetings and discuss the book with other people. There's an infinite number of possibilities to buddy read online because there's lots of creators who do read alongs for specific books. So if you find a creator that's reading a book that you're interested in, you could always join their read along and then be able to discuss with other people in that community. A big benefit of doing a buddy read is that there's usually some kind of deadline that you need to have the book done by, whether that's implemented by the book club itself or just between you and your friend. But regardless, there's going to be some kind of end date that you need to be able to finish the book before. And having that kind of accountability could really make sure that you kind of like force yourself to finish the book in time because you know that you need to finish the book by a specific date. So having some kind of accountability like that is super helpful. Another thing that I really enjoy doing that encourages me to to read more is having a reading journal. So personally, I have a little bullet journal that I like to create spreads in that help me keep track of my reading. I love that bullet journals are customizable to what I wanna do. I can make whatever spreads that I want and keep track of whatever stats that I want. Personally, that's really fun for me. I love doing that. And the way that these reading journals motivate me to read even more is that I love coloring in my little boxes, you know, because I have a spread that shows that I've read 30 minutes that day. So every single day that I read my minimum of 30 minutes, I can color in a little square. And then every time I finish a book, I get to color in something else. And how many pages did I read that day? I get to color in something else. Never underestimate the power of being able to color in a box. Personally, that's something that really motivates me. And so having a reading journal has been super helpful to encourage me to read more because it's kind of like an unconventional type of accountability that you have with yourself. You know, you want to be able to color these things in, so you have to fit in the reading. Now, maybe you aren't too interested in doing a bullet journal. Maybe you don't have the time to set up your spreads and everything like that. There are so many different types of reading journals that are already pre-made and you just write in the name of the book and your star rating.
reading, whatever. They make it super easy for you. There are so many reading journals like this available to buy on the internet. And personally, this excitement to fill out my reading journal keeps me going, keeps me going to the next book so that I can keep coloring in those little squares every time. Another thing that helps me read a lot is to take a book literally anywhere I go. Personally, I take a lot of public transportation because since I live in Paris, it's the most practical way to get around. And so, you know, I spend a lot of time on the metro and waiting on the K for the metro, which again, back to one of my previous tips, you know, instead of scrolling on my phone while I'm writing the metro, I pull out my book and I get a good chunk of reading done instead. So if you take public transportation, I mean, this is really just lost time if you're not reading. And kind of in the same vein, if you don't take public transportation, maybe you drive a car every day to work. Audiobooks could give a huge contribution to how much you're reading every day. You know, maybe you drive to work 30 minutes every day. That's an hour of your day that you could be listening to audiobooks. You could be flying through audiobooks. So reading during your commute can be a huge contributor to reading more every day. Whether that's in public transportation with a physical book or or in your car, for example, listening to an audiobook. However, if you're not a person that uses public transportation, I would still recommend taking a book wherever you go because throughout our days, there's always some kind of dead time. You know, maybe you're waiting in line for something or you're sitting at the doctor's office waiting to be called in or waiting for your friend to show up at lunch. There are always these little moments where there's just dead time where you're probably going to be scrolling on your phone where instead you could pull out your book and get a good few pages read. So this has been super helpful to me to read as much as possible every year is carry a book literally everywhere you go. Another tip that has really helped me read a lot more the past few years is just romanticizing reading. I love to make my space as cozy as possible. You know, I'll throw on an ambiance room on YouTube on the TV with like some soft jazz or the fireplace crackling or a read with me on somebody's YouTube channel. And then I'll make a nice mug of tea to be able to sip on while I'm reading and I'll turn on my twinkle lights and I'll get under my big fluffy blanket and wear my cute pajamas. Like I just love romanticizing this moment of the day and it helps me be excited to read. It just makes this nice moment of reading even nicer because I'm romanticizing everything about it and making it as cozy and enjoyable as possible. One of my biggest tips to help you read more, you're actually already doing it, so you're already on the right track, and that's to watch booktube. Watching booktube is probably the biggest contributor to me going from reading like 15 books a year to over 50 books a year. Now that seems like it would be counterintuitive, like if I'm spending more time watching YouTube, how do I have time to read more books? But it actually makes sense because I absolutely absolutely love watching booktube. I love the creators that I watch and I love watching other people be so excited about books and it makes me excited about the books as well. So when I see a creator that I love be super hype about a book and they can't shut up about it, that makes me want to read that book and be really excited to get to it so that I can see how good it is too and be really excited about the book as well. Also just watching booktube makes you be more informed about what books are out there in general. Before I started watching booktube, the only books I ever knew about were the ones that were sitting out at the bookstore, but now thanks to me watching booktube, I know about so many different books. And because of that, it's easier for me to be able to find books that I'm definitely gonna be interested in. Because I'm able to hear about so many different types of books, I can be more precise about the ones that I choose to read. And there's a higher likelihood that I'm going to love the book that I chose because I know more about it. And I know the taste of the creator who recommended it. And you know, we usually like the same types of books. So I'm more likely to love this book because a creator that I connect with recommended it. So personally for me, watching booktube has been a huge contributor to me reading so much. Another thing that has helped me read more is keeping up with new releases. Personally, while I do love classics and backlist books, I love being excited about new releases. Just that anticipation of knowing that a book that you really wanna read is gonna be coming out and being excited about it and talking to other people in the community about how excited you are, I think that that's so fun. And then when the book finally does come out, going out to buy it and reading it right away and being so excited, so happy that you finally have this book that you've been so excited about, I just think that that's so fun. And it's just really exciting that when an author you've loved before is coming out with a new book, just anticipating being able to read something else from them again is really exciting. And it's just another way to encourage you to keep picking up books because there's always something new to be excited about. Another tip I have is to just go walk around the bookstore. Nothing beats walking into the bookstore with no plans, no idea what you're going to buy, and just finding whatever speaks to you. That is so fun. You know, whether you just find something that has a really beautiful cover and it's just a cover buy that you're really excited about, cool. I mean, maybe that was something you never would have found unless you walked into that bookstore that day. Or maybe you go around meticulously reading all the blurbs, finding something that really speaks to you. Cool, it's something you're excited about. 
and it's really fun to be around other readers. You know, you could just ask a random person in the bookstore for a book recommendation. Just being around books can be really motivating to pick up more books. Another tip I have is to not read books because you feel like you need to read them. It's really important that you're choosing books that you're actually excited about or when you set the book down for the day, you're never really gonna wanna put it back up. There's nothing motivating about picking up a book that you're really not enjoying. And if you're gonna force yourself to keep picking up this book that you're not excited about, you're just gonna drag out the process even longer. You should really be focusing on books that you're excited about and not ones that you feel like you should be reading. And kind of in the same vein, this is actually something that I'm trying to work on, but I'm gonna share it with you anyway because I do think that it would be helpful and that's why I'm trying to work on it. And that's to put down a book if you're not enjoying it anymore. Pretty much always, I'll just push through a book even if I'm not enjoying it because I just want to finish it and see if potentially it redeems itself in the end. But more often than not, because I'm not so excited about picking up this book anymore because I started to not really enjoy it as much, it really just slows me down when I could just be setting this book down and picking up something else and getting through this next book pretty quickly I just kind of stay on this book that I'm not really enjoying too much and kind of slog through it when I should have just set it down for a little bit and I could come back to it you know so even though I haven't perfected this skill yet I did want to share it with you because I do think that that's the best way to go all right so those are all the tips that I have to help you read more in 2023 I hope that I was able to give you some practical tips that you'll be able to implement in your own life because like I said these are all things that I've done in my own life to be able to read you know, 50, 55 books a year. If you have some tips that I didn't mention, I would love if you would put them in the comment section because personally, I would love to be able to implement some new tips to be able to read more myself. But also I think it would be really fun to have one place where we all put together all the tips that we have. So if you've watched this video and you're looking for even more tips, go check out the comment section because maybe somebody put something there that would be useful for you as well. So anyway, I'm wishing you the absolute best with your 2023 reading goals. I hope that you read some amazing books in 2023 and that you reach all the goals that you set for yourself. If you like this video, please give it a like. I would really, really appreciate it and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you back and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.